hearts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord, he is good. And his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Today, we have come. And folks, if you don't know it by now, I'm stoked. I'm excited. I had the privilege of spending all day yesterday with the Crusaders, getting to meet a new member that will be a part of their ministry uh, in the near future. You will be blessed beyond measure. Your hearts will be touched. Your hearts will also be convicted by the presence of the Holy Spirit today. I'm excited about what God's going to do in and through this service. Let me make a couple of announcements, and we're going to turn this over to them in just a moment. First of all, if you make out a love offering gift to the tallies, and, I, and do pray that you will, will do just that. They are here to bless us, but, but folks, we want you to be a blessing to them as well. Be a part of the ministry that God has called them to and uh, that they're going to be sharing with us. Also in the offering plates that's going to be passed in a moment, you will find an offering envelope for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. But you will also find some of these. This is a little bag. Do you remember in the scripture it says that Jesus was, was what? He was betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. What we want you to do is take one of these bags. You're not going to betray Jesus. What you're going to do is have an off, the, off, the opportunity to offer back to Jesus what he's given to you through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering for North American Missions. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to reach somebody for Jesus. Take them home and, yes. <laughs> Miriam says, and, and you take these home and you put at least 30 pieces of silver. Now, I don't know if you got silver at home or not. I'm sure they would accept gold coins too. But anyway, and we're green, okay. We're blessed to be able to be here today. I want to ask two of our, our uh, ushers to come forward that I've already chosen, and uh, we are going to go ahead and we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to anoint this service today, and we're going to ask God to bless the offering that's here, and then we're going to turn this over to the Crusaders. Father, into your presence we come today thanking you for all you've done for us. We are so blessed. Thank you for your presence here today. We invite you to speak to our hearts in a fresh, new, and exciting way. We pray that you would have your will and your way in this service. Father, we pray that as we take up this offering now, that you will use it for the honor and the glory of your kingdom, thanking you that we have the opportunity to serve you through our tithes and our offerings. We thank you again for all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. I want you to stand and let's sing victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story of how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoned.
some praise this morning. Turn around and tell someone that they got victory in Jesus. Turn around and tell them. No, it's fine. Amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? so wonderful. You may be seated, and it is just such a joy to be with you this morning. As uh, my brother Ron said, we had a great time yesterday. We we got here about 3 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning. We came from Shreveport, and uh, uh, I want to tell you, uh, I didn't realize there was uh, back roads still. Uh, the GPS decided to get us off the interstate about 10 miles north of Alexandria. We came through the Kasachi National Forest. We almost had an encounter with a horse in the middle of the road. Uh, uh, that horse had a lot of hair on it, too. It was a shaggy horse, too. And, uh, and I wasn't hallucinating, either. I can tell you, it was right in front of us. And, uh, but we got here, and I want to tell you, it's been a wonderful time. We had such a great time. We even got to be part of a family reunion yesterday. So uh, and you know what happens at family reunions. They eat. And so they invited us to come, and then we got to sing to them. So met some wonderful folks. And... I shared with Brother Ron, uh, this is like coming home out here. I want to tell you, it's like coming home. There's just been such a sweet spirit. Everybody we met, uh, we met some of you yesterday, and it is just a joy to be with you. But I want to introduce everybody to you. Um, the gentleman over here that sings the lead, uh, he's 18 years old, and uh, this is my son, and he's been doing this all of his life, so he didn't have a choice. Amen. And uh, But he plays the guitar and sings, and he's going to do some of that for you. Would you make him welcome, Mr. Jonathan Talley? <laughs> the young man that's back there in the back, he, he's got all that stuff around him back there. I'm thankful that he has to tend to that, and I don't. Amen? And he does a good job. God has gifted him with the ability and technology. Uh, he didn't gift him to sing, so don't ask him. I'm, I'm forewarning you, okay? Uh, and, and if you were here early this morning, you might have heard him because he was in here with a microphone and he thought nobody heard him. And I was standing a good 10 foot outside that building. I heard, well, I said, there's Stephen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, he's up and going. So, But uh, Stephen is such a man of God. I'm watching Stephen grow, and uh, he's 20 years old. And I didn't need another son, but God gave me one. And he moved in with us when he started with us about a year and a half ago. He's originally from Queen City, Texas. Make Stephen Hayes welcome back there. And there's got to be a mom that's involved, amen. And I wouldn't have it any other way. She travels full time with us, and she's not just a mom and a wife. She is such a vital part of the ministry of the Crusaders. Uh, she does so much of the promoting. She, it, the list is so long of what she does, and uh, she doesn't get up here and sing. Uh, I'm praying that one day God's going to just give her that and just going to blow her away when it happens. Uh, she used to didn't even speak in front of She'd get a microphone and her voice would go to quivering. But God's blessed her with the ability. She does a lot of Hades conferences. And, uh, and so God has blessed her with that. And uh, this past Tuesday, March the 5th, we celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary. Would you make my wife, Penny Talley, welcome? <laughs> My name is David Talley, and we are so honored to be with you. 
we're mostly honored to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's about him. It's not about us. We just have the privilege and the honor to stand in and to tell you what a great God that we serve and to see what God has done throughout our lives. I want to encourage you this morning right off the bat. Maybe you're here and you, you woke up this morning and, and, they, and you just had a heavy heart about something or somebody that's on, going through your mind. I'm going to encourage you any time during this service, the song service, the preaching. If God impresses it on you to come and pray, hey, we're going to claim this first rose up here as uh, if you want to come or you want to come get in the altar. It's in order this morning, okay? You don't have to wait till an invitation, okay? I'm giving you one right now. The altars are open 24-7. And last year we started, if you will, a tour called the Altars Altar Families Tour. I want to tell you the altar is mentioned so many times in the Bible. It is such an important part of worship. Yes, you can pray right where you're sitting. You sure can. But I want to tell you, when you make a step out towards God, he sees your heart. And he said, I'm going to hear. I'm going to hear from what's going to be said. And so I encourage you any point in time, if, if you feel led to come and pray, you come. You might even find somebody that might meet you there if you come. Most of all, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to wait. Pastor's sitting right here on the front, and he'll be more than happy to take his Bible and go with you and show you how you can be saved this morning on March the 10th. And you can know. I want to tell you that is the most important thing is for you to know Jesus in a personal way. We're excited about him this morning. I'm going to wait and preach a little later. We're going to get, get back to the singing. And, uh, but I, I just love to serve the Lord. And as uh, uh, Brother Ron shared with you, we've got a new guy that will be starting with us tomorrow. We'll be in uh, Walker, Louisiana, starting a revival tomorrow. And he drove up here, and uh, we spent the day together yesterday singing. And uh, we're excited about what God is going to do. He's already got some stuff, and you'll be getting an announcement about that of what's going to happen that's coming up in May. And uh, it, it, we're excited about what God's going to do. Are you excited about Jesus this morning? Amen. He's worthy. So I want to ask you, are you saved by grace this morning? Oh, and, and I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. And I'm saved by grace. Oh, and I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. I was alone in the darkness. I could not find my way until Jesus shined a light on me and turned all my nights into day. And I am saved by grace. Oh, and I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life and my sins are washed away. And I'm saved by grace. Oh, and I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. Oh, and when I reach that city, the gates swing open wide. I'm going to see redemption the story of how he brought me from the other side. Oh, and when I reach that city, well, then the gates swing open wide. I'm going to sing redemption story of how he brought me from the other side. And I'm saved by grace. Oh, and I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life and my sins are washed away. And I'm saved by grace, oh, and I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. And I'm saved by grace, oh, and I've been saved by grace. 
My name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. And I am saved by grace. Oh, and I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. And it's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down and I will clean Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, yeah. And I love that old cross. Where the dearest and best And for a world of lost sinners Was slain And I cherish the Trophies that last I lay down, and I will cling to the old rugged cross, and it's she. Someday for the crown oh, yeah. to the old a rugged cross I will ever be true it shame and reproach. Gladly bear oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Then he'll call Me someday To my home oh, Far away And where his glory Forever I'll share And it's 
wishing something for a crown. I want to tell you, I grew up listening to that song. And the church that I grew up in was kind of like your church. It's in a little community called Western. The church was quite a bit smaller than this one. If we had 40, we had a big crowd on Sunday morning. And I grew up singing that song and watching my grandmother sit at the piano over there playing for 67 years at the church. But I want to tell you, when I begin to study the cross, that song got a new meaning to And that part that says, till I lay my trophies down, my crowns. My friend, that's talking about when we enter into the gates of heaven and we're rewarded with the crowns of life. Hey, that's not for us. That's for Jesus. To go and to lay them before him and say, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Last year I did a study on the cross and I want to tell you it opened my eyes. See, that song means so much to me because I had a, I've got a Savior. And that Savior bore so much for me. For me. Not only the cross, but everything that led up to the cross from him being scourged twice. And my friend, if you do any research on a scourge and what's what it's about we don't even we can't even fathom we can't even fathom the agony and the pain that the lord suffered for us not once but twice and the pictures that we see today of the portrayal of a man hung on a cross with just a little blood my friend that's not the picture of the cross of calvary See, after he was scourged and he was led up to Calvary, they took the cross piece and they balanced it on the, his shoulder, right in the neck bone. And my friend, that's like you carrying a cross tie on your back. It weighed between 75 and 125 pounds. And he began the trek up the Via Della Rosa to Calvary. And this whole walk, as he began to make that walk, there was people that was mocking him. There were people that were spitting on him. They were hitting him. They were forcing him to the ground. And just the weight of that, after being scourged, I can't even imagine what it was like. But each person that he passed by, he began to look in their eyes and he saw you and I. Because we were the ones that was there that was mocking him. We were the ones because he was bearing the load of our sin. And my friend, when he finally got up there and they placed the cross piece back on him again because he was so weak and Simon of Cyrene carried it for him up there, bore his cross for him up there. My friend, it wasn't an easy task. Oh, they didn't say that this may hurt a little bit. They didn't care. See, Romans were prophetic at torture. They knew. As we're drawing... At the end of this month, on the 31st, the celebration of what our Lord, that should be in the life of a Christian, that should be our Independence Day of what the Lord did for us. I want you to have a vivid picture of the cross. I want you to understand that when they nailed him, those spikes were five to seven inches long, and they were drove in a certain position to cause less bleeding. They knew. And they hammered them in. And then they hammered him into his feet. And then they slammed that cross in the ground to jar him to his core. That's not the end of it. Then the task of breathing begins. See, because you can't hang on a cross and just breathe like you and I. It's a forcible suffocation is what it does. It forces you to quit pushing yourself up to take in air and letting yourself down to exhale. So it's work the whole time. That's why they would come and break his, their legs after a period of time so that they couldn't do it no more. And he looked and he cried out, Father, forgive David because he doesn't know what he's done. 
You can put your name there. That's why this old song means so much to me now. It's because I see the picture of the cross of my Lord and what he did to the old rugged cross. I will ever be true. It's shame and the reproach. Gladly bear. And because of what he did on Calvary, here's what he gave me. Then he'll call me someday, because I've accepted him as Lord, to my home far away. And where his glory forever. Cherries the rugged cross. Oh, seal my trophies at last. I lay down. Oh, and I will clean. song you sing with us. On heaven's mercy, see, yeah. worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come yeah yeah with all creation I sing praise to the king of kings Lord you are my everything and I will adore you Of living color flashes lightning rolls asunder 
Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be, Lord, to the only wise King. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Was and is and is to come. Yeah, yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Wonders, oh, stra wonders at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, bread, living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah, yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. Lord, you are my everything, and I will. Adore you, oh, yes, I will adore you, Lord, yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Was and is and is to come. Yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Amen. That's what we need to do is adore the Lord, worship him. You know, as we, we stop and we think about the cross and we think of what the Lord has done for us, it's amazing just to see God, to see him in, in every way of what he does and how he uses. And he'll use you, my friend. He'll use you in ways that you can't even imagine what he'll do. Let me just stop here. I'm going to tell you there's some stuff that's going on in here this morning already. God is speaking to some people. I shared with you at the very beginning, you don't need to wait till the end. Don't let Satan rob you. Maybe it's you just need to come and pray. You do it this morning. You be obedient. My friend, obedience is like if you've been by a pond and it's totally still, there's no wind, and you pitch a rock out into the middle of it, those ripples begin to come completely off of that where you threw it in. It finally encompasses that whole pond. It leaves nothing unturned. It goes completely out into the corners, the crannies, the... the up in the coves everywhere you being obedient to the Holy Spirit this morning will create a ripple effect when you're obedient to what he says to do 
You know, when the Lord sent Samuel to the house of Jesse, he began to, I'm sure that he had done so much. The Lord had sent him in so many places. He had just left Saul where God had removed his hand from the, the kingship of Saul. And as he went to the house of Jesse to anoint the new king of Israel, I'm sure in his mind that God had created, uh, well, he probably had a picture of what a king looked like. But my friend, I want to tell you, God sees your heart this morning. He's looking down in your heart this morning. And he knows what's going on. Some of you, there's a king inside of you. And God already sees it. Why don't you let him reveal it? Listen to this song. It says, The Champion. The whole nation trembles. Mason a strong foe. The freedom lane of states. But no one the fight and go. The fight by mighty one. A giant of a man. On the mad side of a desert, my God and a champion. God and a champion. A shepherd over some sheep. Faithful to the call. To whatever it should be. On surface, a common man. Yeah, he was so strong. God and a champion to take down the mighty one. The jail was his second home. Most every weekend. That's where he'd end up From boozing and fighting No one gave him hope In a battle he couldn't win But down the road in a little white church My God had a champion God and a champion, shepherd over some sheep, faithful to the call, to whatever it should be, on surface a common man, yeah, he was so strong. My God and a champion to team down the mighty one. On surface a common man, yeah, he was so strong. God and a champion to team down the mighty one. Yes, God and a champion to take down the mighty one. Oh, yes. Oh, the Well, Dad told me to share a little bit. Um, 
I've been doing this all my life and singing on stages and playing drums, you know. I'm 18. Um, I was like so many people out there that Satan had tricked. Um, I had came back, I guess it was from VBS, I believe, and I felt, you know, I was like, Lord, I want to be saved, and I had my parents lead me in a prayer, but I said it from up here, but it didn't come from here. And I stood on stage, and I didn't share my testimony a lot because I didn't have one. I thought I did. And Dad says, you can't share something you don't have. And that's why he would ask me to share, and I couldn't because I didn't have nothing to share. And I stood on stage in front of so many people and told them I was saved and had lied to them. And I lied to myself and lied to friends and family because I thought I was. And there's a difference in thinking you are and knowing. Come on, and some things have went on and, um, in my life and Satan was just beating me down. And I was like, and I started doubting my salvation about a year ago. And I was like, and you know, it's hard to stand up here and sing because Deb would be like, during the invitation, be like, I know there's one more person out there that needs to be saved and you're holding back. And he didn't realize it was me standing right, standing right beside him. And I'm glad to know that the Lord didn't give up on me. Amen. You know, I felt there's a song we started doing and I, and it, I just love it. And, um, it was like, I felt so unworthy to come to the Lord. So I would ask the Lord, would you come to me? Because I felt unworthy because I had lied to so many people out there and lied to myself. But I'm glad to know February 22nd, I got it right with the Lord. I knelt down in front of the couch and asked him to be my Savior. But we're going to sing this song for you. Hope you enjoy it. Amen. I know that I'm unworthy. To call upon your name mm. For all my life I've been a sinner If that I am ashamed Oh yeah but I heard that you will listen. So, Lord, I'm giving you my plea. Giving you my plea. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? Mm, I guess I must be reaping From the seeds that I have sown mm, Lord, you owe me nothing we haven't spoken for so long. Oh, yeah. But you could spare some mercy. Lord, I pledge my life to thee. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? Oh, yeah. I know that there are others who can offer more than I. promise you I'd understand oh, if for me you had no time had no time I think I just hit bottom 
And I'm looking up to see, looking up to see. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? Oh, yeah. I think I just hit bottom. And I'm looking out to see. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Oh, could you please come down to me? Oh, yeah, yes. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Mm. Could you please come down to me? In Philippians 2, verse 9, the Bible says that he was exalted. And he was given a name above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and below. My friend, I want to tell you his name is Jesus. Do you know him? Oh, I didn't ask you if you just know his name. Do you know him? Listen to the song. His name is Jesus, one who died. He saved my life, and he gave me sight. And he. Coming back one day when that trumpet will blow. This man who died will save your life and he will call you home. You may have problems that you don't understand just call on the master and he'll come to store with his hand just fall on your face and cry out to him to help you through this man who died will save your life and be right there for you his name Don't know what to do. 
just say to the master I'll still trust you and day after day I cry out to him to help me through this man who died will save your life and be right there for you. His name is Jesus, the one who died. He said. you go. He'll never leave you nor forsake you is what the Bible says. And I believe that with all of my heart. It's been a joy to be with you this morning. Go ahead, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Daniel chapter 3. Oh, you recognize that. Yeah, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Not a story, a testimony. It's not a fiction thing. You know, I'm excited about... uh, uh, the service this morning and the, what we're coming into right now, and I'm going to be excited in just a little bit about what we're going to partake out there, some physical food. But I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I know that there's some great cooks that are in this room, but I'm going to ask you, we ain't in no hurry. So please stay through the whole service, okay? I'm not worried about that food out there. Hey, if there's something in the oven and it burns, praise God. We'll offer it as a sacrifice. Amen? And... uh Let's just be obedient to what the Lord's going to do. He's doing some stuff this morning, I believe, with all of my heart. I entitled this, Is God Your God? Now, of course, the first thing you're going to say is, yes, he's my God. But I want us to look here. We're going to talk about Nebuchadnezzar for just a few moments this morning. And we're going to begin reading in verse 24. So if you have your Bibles, would you stand in honor of the reading of God's word? Daniel chapter 3 and verse 24 through uh, through 29. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose in the midst of the fire, And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth, watch this, the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furnace, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, go, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth from the midst of the fire, and the princes the governors, the captains, the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor and hair on their heads singed 
neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent an angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their houses shall become a dunghill because there is no other God than that can deliver after this sort. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for a time of worship and praise to you because you are the one that's worthy. Lord, we love you this morning, and Lord, I pray that your sweet Holy Spirit would continue to move around and draw and convict. God, you're speaking to hearts right now, and Father, I pray that they would be obedient, God, and I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray before this message is done that that pew would not contain them, Lord, that they would run to you and confess their sins and call upon you and ask you to save them. Lord, you have your way in this service. You be raised up and exalted. Father, I pray you'd use me in any way you see fit. Lord, it wouldn't be my words, but it would be your words. We love you and adore you. Thank you for Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Immediately, King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the Son of God. That's what the Bible says. Now, I want to tell you this much. The king had never seen Jesus before. But immediately he recognized Jesus. And I want to tell you this morning in your life, when you see Jesus, you can't help but be changed. The king, he was astonished. See, it takes a lot for a king to get up out of his chair. The Bible says he rose up. And he began to question all his wise counselors and everybody that was around him. And he's going, what, what's going on here? Why is there four men in the fire? What's the story on this? And they're, and they're not getting burned up. So when Jesus came on the scene, my friend, business picked up. Things began to happen. The king began to realize some stuff. Now, I I want you to hear this morning, I ask you about, is God your God? And of course, we're all going to say, well, yes, he's my God. He's my God. But listen to me now. You're going to find out King Nebuchadnezzar, he recognized God, but he didn't make him his God. See, he made a decree even that if any, anybody did anything uh, against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he never said he's my God. You getting what I'm saying this morning? There's some of you sitting right here in the house this morning that said, Oh, I serve God. Man, he's a great God. You know, look what he did. But you didn't say, he's not your God. I want to tell you, in churches today, all across this nation, people are fooled. I was fooled in my own house because my son that stood beside me for years. I saw him. I was there when he knelt beside my bed and he prayed a prayer. But he prayed it from his head and not from his heart. See, Nebuchadnezzar saw with his eyes and with his mind who God was. But he didn't ask him into his heart. Hello? Some of you here this morning know who God is. You know the name Jesus. You've heard it preached from this pulpit for years. Some of you got your name on a church roll in here that is lost as a ball in high weeds today. I'm going to tell you. The percentages are there. The percentages in a crowd this this size here today that probably 17 to 20% of the church roll is born again. The rest of them lost. Well, you saying, how can you do that, Brother David? I'm going to tell you, it's not me. It's just the way that it is. But, hey, wouldn't it be neat today that everybody in the house was saved? It can be. If you're here this morning you don't know Jesus Christ, uh, the message has been preached to you already, the cross and him crucified and rose again. He did it for you. Nebuchadnezzar recognized the Son of God. My friend, have you recognized the Son of God? As we look a little further, we found out that he called out for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out. And he was blown away. My friend... When you see somebody that's got Jesus, doesn't it blow you away? When you see their walk and you say, how in the world can they go through what they're going to and have that silly smile upon their face? 
The Bible says that you'll have a peace that passes all understanding. You'll have a calmness that comes about you. Even in the worst situation, when you got Jesus inside your heart and you got him, you got him. And there ain't nobody can take him away from you. You're excited about what he's doing. It may be the worst day that a person has ever had, but yet they've got a peace that passes all understanding. He didn't say when you accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life that everything is going to be peaches and cream. He said, no, you're going to have a peace that passes all understanding. See, I watched my son grow up, and I've watched him sing the songs. I've been beside him when he said some prayers, but see, God was listening for that one prayer. He was listening for Lord Would you forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my personal Savior and save me? And immediately, when he said that from the heart and believed it in faith, my friend, he was saved. And I want to tell you, I've tried for years. He's 18 years old. Jonathan, why don't you talk? We'd, We'd be doing a revival. And I'd say, son, share your testimony. He said, Daddy, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Go ahead. Uh uh. Not today. And I couldn't figure out, and I couldn't figure out. And on Friday the 22nd, I want to tell you, that Thursday night, the 21st, we had been to a prison service, and we had seen 34 men come to know the Lord. We was excited about what God was doing. But we left there, and I'm like, I don't understand. There was more men that stood up, and there was more that needed to get saved, but they didn't come forth. Little did I know that two of them were in the bus with me. Friday morning we got up and there was chaos in the house. How many of you ever had chaos in your house? You might need to take an inventory of what's going on at your house and sit down with your family and say, man, is everything okay? Do you know Jesus? Really? Do you know him personally? Hey, dads, that's your job. You're to be the spiritual household. You're to be the spiritual leader of your house. It ought to not be a problem for you to sit down with your family, gather them around and put your arms around them and say, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I don't, I'm not talking about just knowing his name. I'm talking about do you know him in your heart that if you were to die right now, would you go and be with the Lord? That ought to be a dad's greatest desire to see his whole household saved. The king, the king saw Jesus, but he didn't know him personally. Listen to me now. He called out and he called him the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, a lot of us today in church, we want to talk about coming to church and we're busy in church and we're doing things at church and we want to say we're busy about church. You're calling it somebody else's God and not yours. See, when you're sold out to Jesus Christ and you're born again, washed in the blood, my friend, you're going to have a different walk and a different attitude and a different step about things in your life. You're going to want to come. It's not going to be, hey, i got to get up and go to church. No, we get to get up and go to church this morning. Well, you know, they call and they want me to go on visitation on Thursday night. My, why couldn't they have done it another night? American Idol's on tonight. I just don't understand. My friend, it's not that you have to go. It's you get to go. When you're sold out to the Lord, there's a burning desire in your heart. Well, you say, well, Brother David, it's easy. This is what you do. You travel around and you preach and you sing. No. If I wasn't sold out to the Lord, I'd be at home right now. I'd be at home with my feet up or I'd be at the lake sitting at the cabin over there watching the sun come up and maybe thinking about going fishing. But my friend, I want to fish for something else. I want to go fishing for souls. And I believe this morning there's a catch here. So I'm throwing out the net to you this morning. Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus, but he didn't accept him. Hey, you read on down a little bit further. He was so proud. Oh, we've had revival and we're feeling good. We've seen some folks get saved and uh, we finished up vacation Bible school. And man, it's been great. Oh, my goodness. And we sit back and we say, oh, God was so good. You know, it was just wonderful. The God down there at the Cherry Grove Church. Oh, that, what a great God that Cherry Grove's got. And we sit back and we think, I did this, man. It was so much fun. I worked down here and I did this. Nebuchadnezzar began to sit back in his easy chair and he began to brag on himself. You find that over in chapter 4 at the very beginning of the chapter. Because he cries out and he said, I thought it was good to show that the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought towards me. Oh, we begin to look at this and we begin to see what, oh, it was so great. I was involved in this. And my friend, King Nebuchadnezzar saw Jesus, but he didn't know him personally. 
And we find out that he, then he went to bed and he had this dream that troubled him. And he called and had the dream interpreted. Daniel came and interpreted the dream. And my friend, I want to tell you, there will come a time in your life that you're going to get a wake-up call. You're going to get a wake-up call in your life. You can play around with being a so-called Christian. And you're going to play around with it for so long. And one of these days, there's going to get a wake-up call on your life. And you're going to say, oh, my Lord. Well, it happened to Nebuchadnezzar. You find out on over in that chapter that the dream was revealed. And the Lord spoke to him. I'm talking about the Lord spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. Over in verse 31, it says of chapter 4, the word of the Lord was in the king's mouth. While the word of the Lord, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. My friend, he saw Jesus, but he didn't know him. And then if you read a little further, you find out what happened. In that very moment, he was ran out of his kingdom. And he ate like the grass of an oxen in the field. His hair grew to where it said he looked like he had feathers like an eagle. And he had fingernails that looked like cat's claws. And he wandered around out there for many days. And I want to tell you, some of you is in the wandering stage here this morning. You're wandering around... Looking because God has spoken to you and you've not listened to him. And we've played church for so, so long that it just becomes, this is what we do. But there come a wake-up call and it came to Nebuchadnezzar. And we find out that after days passed, he humbled himself and he cried out that there is no other God. There is no other God but the Lord God of heaven. And he recognized that he needed somebody. This morning, have you recognized that you need a Savior? Have you recognized that it may be, maybe it's Mary's God that you've been seeing. Maybe it's John's God. Because you see something in them. You see that they've been changed. The Bible says you'll know them by the fruits they bear. See, I've watched my son, and since February the 22nd, Since February the 22nd, I've seen a change in his life. I've seen a change in Stephen's life because Stephen got saved 30 minutes after Jonathan did. On the same floor, on a different couch in our living room. A year and a half prior to that, Jonathan's girlfriend, Ashley, raised in church all of her life. Her dad's a deacon. Her mom has been, uh, works in the church constantly. They grew up in church. They were always active in everything, went to church camp every time the bus rolled out, went to vacation Bible school, taught in it, did it all. And if you would have saw her, you would have said, yeah, she knows the Lord. Hey, she knew him up here. She didn't know him down here. A wake-up call comes. A wake-up call comes. Nebuchadnezzar saw the Son of God walking in the fiery furnace, but he didn't accept him until days Later, because of the fact that he didn't want to recognize that there was an issue, that there was a problem. He thought everything was good because all the king, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you know him personally this morning? I'll ask you, is God your God? Is he your God? Or maybe it's something else. Who is God to you? Is he just something that's in this book and you you open it up when you come on Sunday morning and you carry it home, you put it on the shelf, and then you sit down in front of your chair and you turn on that old TV and you watch every blooming thing that's on it and spend hours in front of it absorbing it. Is that your God, the TV? Hey, gods can be anything. You can put anything before the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Man, I love to enjoy things, and there's nothing wrong with having blessings from God. Vehicles, cars, boats, campers, nice homes, all of that's wonderful. But my friend, when it comes up before Jesus Christ, it's become a God. And you begin to call out to it, well, I'll worship my F-150 
Ranch King today because I pay the note on that thing. Oh, I've got a beautiful 3,200 square foot home and it's my God because I have to pay the notes on it. I worship it. It's more important than going out and telling somebody about Jesus because I've got to stay here and mow the grass to make it look good. I'm talking about let's get things in order this morning. Let's get things lined up in priority. Priority is, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you made him your personal Savior this morning? Can you go back to a point in time in your life where there was a line drawn in the sand where you said, Lord, I'm a mess and I need a Savior. Lord, would you forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my personal Savior and forgive me? Is there a time and place? Oh, I didn't ask you when did somebody pray over you because somebody praying over you ain't going to save you. I had a wonderful grandmother that played the piano as I shared with you for 67 years was at church every time the doors opened. But she couldn't save me. As much as she loved Dave, she couldn't save me. See, you can't get into heaven on a skirt tail of your grandma. You can't get in because your daddy was a deacon in the church. You can't get in because your daddy's a pastor of a church. You can't get in because your mama led, led the music at church. You can't get in because you know a southern gospel singer. You can't get in because you're a southern gospel singer. You can't get in because you're an evangelist. The only way you can get into heaven is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accepting him and calling upon him and being washed in the blood. So this morning is... God, your God. Take a little inventory this morning. See, eternity is too long to be wrong about salvation. Satan's biggest game is he makes you think you're okay because you just come to church. Well, why would I want to go to church if I wasn't saved? Hey, there's a lots of folks that love to come and just sit and hear gospel music because they like the, the beat of it. They like the four parts, the three parts. They like the, the songs. They feel good about it. This past September, we, we were in Louisville, Kentucky at the National Quartet Convention. The Lord began to just show me as I sat in, in our booth and looked down the aisle, and there was thousands upon thousands of people, most of them above the age of 50, walking up and down through there, and he said, the fields are white. They're white under harvest. But the laborers are few. Today in our churches, it's that way. The fields are, are white under harvest. Is God your God this morning? See, he loves you. As I shared with you the picture of the cross, he loves you this morning. If he didn't, he would not have come from the portals of heaven, come down, put on flesh, and walked. A fleshly walk, perfectly, feeling and tempted in every way that you and I will ever be tempted and more. And then go and to go through what he did to die for you and I if he didn't love you. Don't let Satan tell you you're unworthy. Don't let him say, God will never forgive you of that. Because God will if you'll confess. If you'll come to him and cry out to him, he'll save you this morning. He'll forgive you. The Bible says that he'll cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered again. The only person that would ever bring them back up would be old Satan trying to bring you down after you've accepted the Lord. This morning is God your God. I'll ask you to bow your heads right where you're sitting. See, it's just like Samuel. God told him, he said, look, I, I look upon the heart. See, he knows your heart this morning. See, you can fool me. You can fool me because we'll, in a couple of hours, we'll pack our stuff down and we'll be gone. And I probably, there's chances are I might not never see you again. But you can't fool God this morning. You cannot fool him. There's no way that you can fool him because he's looking at your heart this morning. See, so he already knows. Is God your God? As you do your inventory and you look inside, 
Have you truly asked him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior this morning? Have you ever asked him personally to save you? Prayed a prayer of faith and said, Lord, I'm lost and I need you. I need you to come into my life and to forgive me of my sin. And Lord, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now that you're in heaven. And Lord, would you save me? See, that's a personal, that's you doing it personally. This morning, you already know. You would know without a doubt. If the Lord's dealing with you right now, that the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart's door, you know without a doubt. Why not this morning? Why not ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior? Hey, don't, don't worry about what somebody else is going to think. As we knelt on the couches there at home, Stephen, he was, he was so worried that because at the age of nine, he walked the aisles and he said, what are people going to think about me? My words was him was, I'm not worried about what somebody else thinks. I'm worried about what Jesus Christ thinks. Because this life is just a vapor. It's a short time. But eternity is eternity. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He is God. You're God. This morning, why don't you invite him in? See, he can hear whisper all the way to heaven. He can hear you because he's seen your heart. This morning, if that's you, why don't you pray a prayer of faith? And just believing in your heart that he died for you. Pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died and you rose again. And that you're in heaven right now. Lord Jesus, I've messed up. And I've done some things. Would you forgive me of my sins? And come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, serious questions now. Serious questions. Did you pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart this morning? You meant business. You prayed that prayer of faith. See, me praying a prayer won't save you. That's you. You've got to do it. If you did, I'm going to ask you to slip, slip your hand up right where, where you're at this morning. Just raise your hand up high that you asked the Lord to save you this morning. Come on, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I can tell you that right now. Nothing whatsoever to be ashamed of that you ask the Lord to save you. Right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Brother Ron's going to be here at the front. Brother, and I'm going to ask you just to slip, slip out of your pew and come down here and take Brother Ron by, by the hand. Come on, right, right now, brother. It's all good. It's all good. Any others this morning? God's doing, doing some business this morning. Any others? Raise your hand up high that you accepted the Lord this morning. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's all good. Amen. Amen. You meant business with the Lord. If you meant business with, with the Lord, just go ahead and stand up and make your way on down, down here. Come on. Come on, sister. It's all good. It's good. Come on. Come on. I need someone to pray with this young lady as she comes down. Somebody from the church. Come down and pray with her. Come on, right right now. Somebody from the church. Any others? Come on. I know there's some more. I know that God has been dealing with a bunch of you this morning. Any others this morning? Come on, right right now. See, Satan will tell you, oh, what are they going to think? I've had my name on a church roll for many years. What are they going to think? Right now, if you ask the Lord to save you, just make your way on down. Right now. Come on. Church, I want to ask you this. Where are you at in your walk with God? Where are you at in your walk with God this morning? 
Is it where it needs to be or is it where you want it to be? See, there'll come a wake-up call for you too one day. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your sweet spirit this morning. Lord, I pray right now that you continue to move and Lord, that you would continue to have your way in this service. And Lord, there are are others I know that you've dealt with this morning. I pray that they would just come and fall on their face in this altar and just cry out to you. Lord, now you have your way. Continue to have your way in this invitation time. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to stand if you will. Why don't you come and pray this morning? Why don't you make your way on down here and just pray? How many of you know lost folks this morning? Raise, raise your hand. Come on. How many of you know, know some lost for, folks? Are they worth praying over? Then step out and start praying for them. Amen. We're going to sing. Let's just continue to let, let the Lord have his way. I'd rather. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'm rather have my Jesus rich as untold. You see, I'd rather have my Jesus in houses or land. I'd rather being led Amen. by his nail-pierced hands Then to be the king of a vast domain Or be held in sin's dread Away. Hey, is he your God you this morning? See, I'd rather he wants to be your personal have Savior. My Jesus, anything in this world affords to gain. Young folks, I want to talk to you for just a second. Every young person in the house, I want you to look up here at me. John's 18 years old. He could have just took and said silently in his heart, Lord, save me. But no, he chose to do what the Bible says, to confess before men that Jesus is his Lord and Savior. This morning, have you confessed Jesus Have you confessed? See, he stood before thousands of people and said that he was saved. What about you this morning? What about you? Were you just like him, had walked the aisle at an early age, and and all of a sudden today you've realized that you don't know Jesus, that you've never accepted him personally in your life? What about you this morning? Don't let Satan trick you because he's telling you right, right now. He's knocking and saying, hold on a minute, they'll be done. And I'll be over with in just a few minutes. We're going to sing another verse. You come right now. I'd rather have Jesus than me in applause. You see, I'd rather, I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause you see I rather have my Jesus than all the world by fame you see I rather be true to his own Then to me, the king of a vast storm will be held in sin's dress. 
Is he a feather? Am I Jesus? Anything in this world a force to gain Then to me Jesus anything oh, yes, Lord. in this Lord. world a force to gain in this world a force to church oh how he loves you and me and oh how oh, church he loves you and me and he moved in an awesome way. Y'all, I, don't, I really don't believe God's through mm -mm. at this point. I still believe God's working on some people's hearts Amen. here today. I want you to know that there are two folks here that just gave their life to Jesus Christ. Their lives will never be the same ever again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Another come today to recommit her life to the Lord Jesus Christ, to recommit that walk with Him Thank you, Lord. that she began when she was 23. There are some of us today, whether you need to make a profession of faith or not, there are some of us today who need to come to an altar today and recommit our heart and life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When David was speaking a while ago about, about David, the Lord laid on my heart that there, not only is there a David in us, he is seeing something that we don't see in ourselves. He is seeing a potential in us. 
And some of us are not wanting to let go of our own lives so that we can reach the potential that God has for us. And I'm going to tell you, for the last few months, I'm number one on that boat. Been holding back. I want to ask you, church, how many of you who are serious about your walk with Jesus, how many of you are really serious? How many of you will make a pledge with me today by coming to an altar as individuals, as couples, or as a family and saying, I want to reach that potential that God has for me right now? How many of you would be willing to do that? Would you pledge with me to do that as an individual, as a family? Would you make that pledge? I'm asking you, step out from where you are if you're willing to make that pledge as an individual, as a family. Look, see. God turned the world literally upside down with 12 men who committed themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Look at this. What's He going to do in Midi, Louisiana? That's it. When people give their hearts and their lives over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and say, I pledge. Myself and I pledge my family, we are going to serve the Lord. We will make a difference. Amen. We will. Right now, we're going to do something. Boy, this is not very uh, churchy, is it? (laughs) We're going to ask a prayer blessing right now on all of these. Amen. And then before we go, We want a special recognition of some folks whose lives will never be the same. Never, ever be the same. Father, how can I say thanks for the things that you've done for me? (laughs) So undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. Thank you, Father, for that. And I thank you for these men and women that are up here today. Individually and as as couples and as families, Father, they have come to make a pledge to you. I give my life to you, Jesus. I pledge, Father, I want to reach the potential that you have for me. I want to make a difference. God bless them. Pour out your spirit upon their lives, especially these men that stand here. God, I pray that you would bless them as husbands and as fathers, as men of the household. God, lift them up. God, thank you for your presence, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon this place today. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Bow your heads with me. There may be somebody still here that God's working on. Maybe you don't feel comfortable coming up here right now. God's spoken to your heart. This church is almost empty to the pews right now, but there may be somebody in this room right now that says, Brother Ron, you're right. David's right. I don't know positively for sure that I'm saved. Would you pray for me, Brother Ron? Slip your hand up real quick and put it back down. If you're serious, right now. Thank you. Anybody else? Those of you just raised your hands. 
Would you be willing to make a step of faith? Yes, Lord. Just like these others did. Would you step out and say, Brother Ron, I need to get serious right now. I need to get serious. I need to ask Jesus in my life. Would you step out and just like these others did right now? Would you say, Brother Ron, I really am needing prayer right now. God's touched my heart today. I need a closer walk with Jesus today. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up and put it down. Thank you. Anyone else, you know you need a closer walk with Jesus today. Slip it up and put it down. Thank you very much. know that song on each face and I know that it's the spirit of the Brother Cliff, you step up here, please. We all know Clifford. He'd been coming a long time. Tonight, for the first time in his life, he got serious with God. And he asked Jesus Christ to come into his life. God is now his God. Amen. His life will never be the same. Yes. And we're going to talk, be talking with him. He wants to be obedient from this point on. He Thank wants God. to follow the Lord and be a difference maker. And we'll be baptizing him soon. And uh, we'll see the glory of the Lord move in a mighty way. And I know that Casey and his, her family have been praying for him already. Why don't you stand by his side, Casey? I know you're proud. Emily comes this morning. Emily Martin comes this morning. And uh, she, uh, she prayed that same prayer that many of us did at one time, but it was a head prayer. Mm. And this morning she comes getting serious yeah. with the Lord. And she asked Jesus Christ to come into her life and to, to be real in her life. And we talked about those steps of obedience. And I'll be talking to her some more about that. But praise the Lord for these. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. yeah. Paula, Andy have been coming for a while now. But Paula comes this morning and she said that she wanted to recommit her heart and her life to the Lordship of Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you, Lord. She was saved when she was 23 and today she says it's time to get serious again about that and she wants to join this church and be a part of the family of God here. Amen. So what we need to do church is do three things. We need to accept them as a part of the body of Christ. Do we have a motion to do that? If Jerry goes, Miss Alame, and do we have a second? Boy, there are about 15 hands that went up real quick. And then in that case, all of God's people said, Amen. And you oppose, you can come see me. Yeah. yeah. I'll be there with you too, brother. You'll be right there. Huh? That's good. All right. God is good. I see that hand, Lainey. God is good. Thank you for being a part of this wonderful service. Don't you think God moved today? Don't you think it was good? You want to see it again? Well, in that case, Deacon, 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 
I've already invited them to come back and do a revival. <laughs> so, <laughs> May the 29th through June the 2nd, we will have the Crusaders come back and lead us in revival. By that time, they'll have Brother Jeff with them. Brother Jeff is a youth minister, preacher. I stayed up half the night, I promise you, half the night last night. So many things going through my head about what God could do in this revival. Amen. When you've got a youth minister who's equipped for doing working with youth, you've got a, a lady God's touched now to work with ladies. I can see a men's conference in there too. Mm-hmm. Amen. Woo. Yeah, I'm excited. God's good. Yes, he is. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to pray. We're going to dismiss. Those of you who are left out there, <laughs> not many of you, come by. Say, I love you. Or maybe what's left out here needs to go out there and wrap your arms around them. Say, I love you. But please be sure to come by right here. Give Paula a hug and Emily and Clifford and say, we love you. And we're praying for you. Brother Ron, can I share yes. something real quick? I, yes. Um, it's been a joy to be with you this morning. And by all means, I, I know here in a few moments we're going to go back in fellowship. Hey, I don't have to eat anything. If God is dealing with you, I, I, I'll be glad to stay in here with you. We'll pray. We'll do whatever to where that you can leave here different from the way you came in. And uh, I don't have to eat anything. I can miss a bunch of meals and I'll be all right. I promise you that. But it is such a joy to be with you. We are a full-time ministry. This is what God's called us to do. Uh, we've got a big product table that's over in the, uh, the fellowship hall or the family life center. Uh, it's over there. We've got some stuff back here in the back as well. We, there are CDs, and we have all sorts of stuff over there. Uh, somebody will be over at that one, and somebody will be back here at this one. But most of all, if God is dealing with you this morning, hey, I'm going to stay in here. You come find me. Hey, we'll sit down here and we'll take the Bible and I guarantee you, God can answer any of your questions that you need and he can get it right and all. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Um, those of you who did not hear, that's for Miss Anna Petrie. Uh, they are making some very difficult decisions today, and uh, they really do need our prayer. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful to see family here. Um, I know it's hard. So our prayers are with them. Anything else? Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless the food, the fellowship. Please stay. Be with us continue the fellowship that God's already started with us here today. As we do that, I want to ask Brother Craig Hill, if he would, to dismiss us.